You just entered a riddle-solving competition. The game show host shows you the first riddle you have to answer. Take a look at the image. Who do you think will be able to make it all the way across the line? Let's face it, it's the man on the left. Even though it looks like he's having a hard time carrying such heavy things, the weight is evenly distributed between his two hands, so he'll probably make it through without any problem. For your next challenge, the game show host shows you a picture of sinking boats. Which boat do you think will sink first? The first boat has two holes in it, but somehow it has way less water inside. The second boat only has one hole, but look at the amount of water that's gotten inside. It's definitely the second boat that's going to sink first. Since you passed the first two rounds, the third one gets a bit harder. Ken was riding on his rollerblades when he fell down and hurt his head. He woke up in the hospital, only to find that three Barbies were waiting for him. Take a look at the image. Can you figure out which Barbie is actually Ken's girlfriend? This is a tricky one. It can't be the third Barbie, because the real Barbie would never wink at Ken. It's usually him that does the flirty things. It's also not the second Barbie, because she would never put on makeup in front of him. So this leaves us with the first Barbie, who must be his girlfriend. The Finn is a famous hostel in Spain. It's especially famous for its fun showers. But hey, something doesn't look right in this image. Take a look and try to guess what it is. The woman on the right is squeezing a ketchup bottle instead of a shampoo bottle. That's definitely weird, huh? For the final rounds, the host picked out a few written riddles for you. The first one is, I speak without a mouth and hear without ears. Am I a microphone, a phone, or an echo? What would you say? The answer is echo, echo, echo. (laughs) I'm not alive, but I can grow. I don't have lungs, but I need air. What am I? A tree, fire, or clouds? The correct answer is fire. Way to go if you chose that. Now, Carol was invited to a Halloween party in an abandoned house. Her friends asked if she was up for a challenge, and she said yes. Soon enough, she was locked inside a room. In this room, there was one door and three light switches next to it. Behind the door was an empty closet with nothing but a light bulb. Her task was to figure out which switch controls the light bulb inside the closet. She could flip the switches in whatever way she wanted, but once she opened the door, she couldn't touch the switches anymore. After some minutes of thinking, she was able to get it right. How did Carol do it? Okay, let's go step by step. She flipped switch number one and then waited a few minutes. She flipped it back to off and then immediately flipped switch number two. Then she opened the door and checked the light. The bulb was off, so she discovered that it wasn't switch number two that controlled the light. So she decided to touch the bulb to test if it was hot or cold. If the bulb had been cold, that would have meant that switch number three controlled it. But the bulb was hot, so that meant that switch number one controlled one. Way to go, Carol! To get back to the party, Carol had to solve another riddle. There were two hourglasses in front of her. One hourglass measures 7 minutes, and the other one measures 4 minutes. She needed to time 9 minutes using both hourglasses. How could she do it? (laughs) 
First, she turned both hourglasses at the same time. By the time the 4-minute glass finished, there were still 3 minutes left on the other one. She flipped the 4-minute glass again. When the 7-minute glass was empty, there was 1 minute left on the other glass. And once the 4-minute glass emptied again, there was 1 minute's worth of sand at the bottom half of the 7-minute timer. She flipped it over again, so there was 1 minute worth of sand on the top of the glass. And when the 7-minute timer finally emptied again, 9 minutes elapsed in total. Anna sat down to watch her favorite TV show. She made some popcorn, turned on the TV, and nestled comfortably to binge-watch an entire season. Her cat Pepper sat down next to her. But after 5 minutes of screen time, Anna suddenly passed out. Look at the image. Can you guess what happened there? Anna's cat Pepper got scared with a loud thump that came from the TV. It jumped on top of Anna, and it scared the life out of her. That's why she passed out. Take a look at this scene. Who do you think has the best chance at survival? The two guys look pretty stuck in there, but the woman on the right might have a chance. The rope looks a bit loose around her body. She could try to shake it off and then use her free hands to untie her ankles. Bella landed in New York with a very ambitious career goal. But first thing she needed to do after arriving in the city was to find her apartment. There were many options to get from the airport to her apartment, but Bella decided to save money and go by bus. She had to purchase a ticket for $10, but a handsome guy popped out of nowhere and offered her a better deal. He said his plans had changed, and he didn't need his bus ticket anymore. He offered to sell it to her for $6. Bella agreed and gave him the money. But it turned out to be a big mistake. Why? Uh Take a look at the current date on the screen of the vending machine. And now, check the date on the ticket. The ticket the man sold Bella expired over a month ago. Finally, Bella managed to arrive in Manhattan and find her apartment. She was sharing a house with three other women. Bella introduced herself to them and went to settle in her room. She left her belongings on her bed and went to take a shower. When she stepped out of the shower, Bella noticed that her laptop was missing. She got furious and decided to interrogate all of her new roommates. Sarah said she had gone out to get a cup of coffee. She even told Bella to ask the doorman of their building since he had seen her leave. Kelly said that she had taken an afternoon nap with her headphones on. She said she hadn't heard or seen anything strange going on inside the apartment. Shannon said that she had gone to the building's rooftop to take some pictures of the city since she was a professional photographer. Can you tell who's lying here? It's Shannon. Uh-oh. If you notice the sign on the lobby, the building strictly prohibits people from accessing the rooftop. Alfred is a supermodel and he just landed his dream job. The biggest magazine in the country invited him to be on the cover of their latest issue. On the day of the photo shoot, he arrived early in the studio. Uh-oh. After finishing with hair and makeup, he looked in the mirror and screamed, Oh no! His skin was all red. It looked like he was having some serious allergic rash. He called all the assistants he had seen earlier in the day to interrogate them. Amy, the photographer's assistant, said she had been told Alfred was allergic to peanuts, so she made sure to only buy safe snacks. Bo, the makeup artist, said he hadn't touched Alfred's food. He said that right after he finished doing his job, he left for a coffee break. Mary, the cleaning lady, said that she knew how sensitive models could be. So that's why she had only used organic and hypoallergenic products to clean his dressing room. Alfred immediately knew who had contributed to his rash. Can you figure it out too? (laughs) 
It was definitely uh -oh. Bo. Sure, he didn't have access to Alfred's food, but he was the only one who touched Alfred's face that day. Liv was recording a dance routine for her social media page oh, no. when a huge portal opened up and swallowed her whole. The next thing she knew, she was stuck inside a big cavern. Out of the blue, a great genie appeared. He told her that she would only be allowed to leave if she figured a way out by herself. As soon as he disappeared, she saw that there were three buttons on the wall. There was a red, a yellow, and a green button. On the floor, there was a note that read T-D-U-P-T, R-N-O-R, E-H-E-B, and S-S-T. She clicked one of the buttons and managed to open a door on the wall. Can you guess which button she chose? The red button. She unscrambled the words on the note and discovered it read, Press the red button. As soon as she pressed the button, Liv was transported into a virtual reality world. An artificial intelligence greeted her welcome and showed her three doors. The AI told her that only one door would lead to her freedom. It told her that behind the first door, there were hungry Pac-Men waiting for someone to walk inside. Behind the second door, there were cursed rollerblades. Once you put them on, you'd never be able to take them off. Plus, they had a will of their own and ended up taking you to some pretty dark places. Behind the last door, there were flying fuzzy creatures with laser eyes that would burn anything they came into contact with. Uh -oh. Which door do you think Liv should use to escape? Well, she should pick the second door. Because she wouldn't be obligated to put the pair of rollerblades on. She could walk past them and straight to her freedom. During the time she was gone, Liv noticed that someone had stolen her laptop. It had oh, all no. her social media content on it. She figured it must have been one of her roommates, so she decided to take a look around the house and try to find it. Look at these images. The first room belongs to Jill. The second one belongs to Rachel. And the third one belongs to Amy. Can you figure out who stole Liv's laptop? If you look closely, Rachel's cat is sleeping on top of something that really looks like a laptop. It must have been her. Sammy was visiting her grandmother during Halloween. When her grandmother went to get groceries for their Halloween dinner, Sammy started hearing strange noises from the attic. He got curious and wanted to find out what was making them, so he climbed there. He noticed that a big wooden box was glowing. He went to open it, but it was locked. Luckily, his grandmother was a bit forgetful, so she left some clues around the room. Can you help Sammy figure out the digit passcode? Take a look at these books stacked next to the box. Did you notice that these four books have numbers instead of titles on their covers? Those must be the numbers he needs to open the box. So the passcode is 4203. After Sammy opened the box, he started hearing the whispers again. They were coming from the strange book that was in the box. The book was saying, Open me, but to do that you need to answer the riddle on my cover. In the sun, I dance and play, but in the dark, I fade away. I'm not alive, yet always near. What am I? Can you tell me, dear? The answer is a shadow. As soon as Sammy opened the book, it magically teleported him to a dark forest. He started panicking and running around frantically. That's when he spotted an owl sitting on a branch. The owl said, Lost friend, I can help you find your way out of this labyrinth of trees. But first, you have to hear my riddle. I'm not alive, 
but I can reflect your fear. Look into me, and I'll always be near. What am I must be crystal clear. Do you know the answer? It's a mirror. The owl guided Sammy to a wizard's cottage. Then, Sammy explained his situation to the wizard and convinced him to help. There was only one spell that could send Sammy back to his world, and it was in a magic book that was stolen from an evil witch. So, the book was not revealing its secrets to the wizard. There was a riddle at the back of the spell book, and it said, Speak what belongs to you, but is used more by the others, and I shall reveal my secrets. Do you know what that is? It's your name. The Monster Hunters Agency was suspicious that a witch had crossed into our world from the supernatural realm. After following the magic trail the witch left behind, they got suspicious of three people. So they placed hidden cameras in their rooms and started observing them sleeping to figure out who the witch was. Can you help them? Okay, each of these people has something in their rooms that indicates they might be a witch. But take a look at the broom inside the first lady's bed. But first of all, it's made of plastic. And it also has a label on it, which means it was bought from the store. The third lady is wearing a glowing amulet. I admit it looks mysterious, but it's just a toy. So the witch is the lady with the pointed hat peeking out from underneath her pillow. And if that doesn't convince you, her black cat sleeping on the other side of the bed will. Amy's town had an old museum that the residents believed to be haunted. Amy and her friends decided to spend the Halloween night inside the museum to have some spooky fun. When the clock struck midnight, all the portraits hanging on the museum walls came to light. Then a portrait of a lady started screaming for some help. She told Amy that the former employees dared to make a fake version of her portrait and she wanted Amy to destroy it. But once Amy saw the fake portrait, she spotted three differences from the original and assured the lady that it couldn't hold a candle to the original. Can you spot them too? The pendant on the lady's neck, her lipstick color, and the ribbon on her hair are different from the original painting. The spooky traveling circus company was going to visit Evelyn's town to put on a Halloween show, and she really wanted to go. But they were only offering a few tickets to the people who could answer their riddle correctly. With fur as dark as the midnight sky, it's often seen as an omen. Oh my! In superstitions, it takes its place. A witch's companion with mystery and grace. Can you tell what this is? The answer is a black cat. The circus company required all the audience members to come to the show dressed in costumes. So Evelyn headed to the shopping mall to get herself a costume. She found three options to choose from. A witch costume, a mermaid costume, and a Victorian era vampire costume. Which one should she pick? Take a look at the back of the witch costume. It says it's made out of paper, so it'll not be a good idea to wear that. And the mermaid costume is all teared up at the back. So, she should choose the Victorian era vampire costume. It may look bloody, but it sure fits the theme. It was finally Halloween, aka the day of the show. Evelyn headed to the circus tent to wait in line to enter the venue. But three strange things among the people caught her eye. Can you spot what they are? Look at this guy waiting in the line. 
His feet are not touching the ground. He's floating. Evelyn also saw her friend Edward waiting in line. As they started waiting together, she learned that Edward's ticket was from the first row and they wouldn't be sitting next to each other. When the circus manager overheard them talking, he suggested that he might be able to change Evelyn's seat. Then he brought three chests, put the new ticket into one, and told Evelyn to follow it. If she was able to tell which chest the ticket was in by the end, he would give it to her. So, watch the manager move the chests and help Evelyn win the ticket. The ticket is in this one. Before the show started, Evelyn and Edward went to the cafeteria to grab some snacks. Take a look at these three options. Which one should they get? Take a look at the date that's written on the potato chips package. According to it, the chips expired in 1980, so that's a pass. And take a look at the small note below the ice cream. It says it's earwax flavored. Nobody wants to taste that, so they should pick the popcorn. The gooey thing on top of it is just caramel sauce. The show finally began. The first performer was a magician, and his first trick? He teleported from the right side of the stage to the left side. But Evelyn saw right through his illusion and figured out how he did it immediately. Can you? Look behind this curtain. There is a portable projection machine. It sure has something to do with that. As the spooky show continued, Evelyn realized that something was off with some of the performers on the stage. She started suspecting that some of the circus members might not be human after all. Can you tell what made her think so? Take a look at the singer first. She has gills at the sides of her neck. Secondly, did you notice the yellow, long, sharp nails of the juggler? And lastly, the rope walker has a tail at the back. Once the show was finally over, the circus manager came to the stage and said, Ladies and gentlemen, we've been lying to you. You see, we're actually creatures of the underworld and we came here to steal your souls. All the exits in our tent are magically sealed, so you can't escape. Only those who know our riddle correctly will be freed. I have a mouth, but I can't speak. I run, but I can't walk. What am I? Can you help everyone escape? The answer is a river. Matt buys a new house. In the basement, he discovers three signed boxes and a note. It says that one of the boxes contains one million dollars. The two other boxes are empty, according to the note. Only one of the three messages uh -oh. written on the boxes is true. On the first box, it's said that the cash is not there. The second box has a similar message, the cash is not here. And the third box says that the cash is in the second box. If you were Matt, which bag would you choose? Matt should choose the first bag, as we know only one of the clues is true. So the money should be in the first bag. Matt walks out of his house and goes to the garden. He pulls out his right hand. Suddenly, a bee lands on it. What's in Matt's uh -oh. eye? Beauty. Why? Because beauty is in the eye of the bee holder. In the garden, Matt takes two pictures. 
Can you spot three differences between them? Here they are! Matt returns home and figures uh -oh. out that someone has broken into his house, and the thief has just left. How did Matt figure this out? Someone turned on his electric stove and put a plastic bag on top. The plastic is only half melted, so the thief must have left a few seconds ago. Matt goes to his favorite vegan restaurant as usual on Fridays. He orders a slice of pizza, puts it on a table, and leaves for a couple of minutes to wash his hands. Then Matt comes back and finds out uh -oh. that his pizza is gone. He interrogates three customers nearby. Harold says, I'm not hungry, so I didn't even look at your food. I came here for the sake of coffee. Bella says, I was having a video call with my boyfriend. He lives in another country, so we go on virtual dates every Sunday. Distance is so exhausting. And Anna says, I was taking pictures of my food, so I didn't look around. You can check them out if you don't believe me. After hearing about what they had to say, Matt knows for sure who's a liar. What about you? According to Bella, she goes uh -oh. on virtual dates every Sunday. But it's Friday. Liar! Matt's girlfriend Erica is visiting him in his lab. Suddenly, she faces two identical Matts. Can you help her figure out who's a clone? The guy on the right has a scar on his arm. Meanwhile, the clone doesn't have any because his skin is brand new. Matt goes to the mall and buys a bat and a ball for $1.10 in total. The bat costs $1 more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? Nope, the correct answer is not 10 cents. It's actually a little less. A ball costs 5 cents and the bat $1.05. And, and together, they total $1.10. Someone robbed Matt's lab. The thief stole the cloning device and he's going to hand it over tonight. This is a great opportunity to catch the criminal. The police figure out the approximate place where to look for the device. They decide to question several people nearby. Greg says, The garbage truck has just emptied the overhead trash cans. Jeff says, I'm in charge of these trash cans. I checked all the cans next to the yellow ones and found nothing interesting. And Bill just points at all the trash cans that someone approached today. Can you help uh -oh. the police find the trash can with the stolen device? First of all, we need to calculate the top cans. And now let's check all the remaining trash cans which people were approaching. The next step is to remove those next to the yellow ones. And here it is, the trash can we've been looking for. After the robbery, Matt decides to lock his lab door with a password. There are four buttons with different images. Orange, banana, apple, and tomato. Can you guess which button opens the door? The odd one out is the tomato because all the others are fruits. So it should open the door. A priceless crystal disappeared from the local science museum. The thief left no trace behind. After analyzing the museum's security cameras, Matt invites three suspects for an interrogation. The security guard says, I only left my post once during lunchtime. I can swear that the crystal was still there when I came back. The museum curator says, I spent the day guiding a tour of foreign scientists. They came to see the crystal at the beginning of the tour. It was still shining bright in its place. One of the visitors says, I only popped in for a quick visit. I didn't even pass through the room where the crystal was kept. After hearing their stories, Matt knows for sure who the thief is. What about you? Hey, 
It was the visitor. He hid the crystal in his sleeve. Matt's brother, Greg, arrives at his house to eat together. He yells, Matt, the microwave is on, and it's already defrosting our dinner. Greg hears Matt's reply from the bathroom. Could you please check the microwave and let me know how much time is left? Greg grabs his phone and calls the police. He reports a dangerous situation involving his brother. How did he know? Greg is blind, so his brother would have asked him to look at the microwave because Matt knows that Greg can't see. This made Greg suspicious, and that's why he called the police. The next day, Matt wakes up in a secret abandoned lab. He wanders around and finds three doors leading to freedom. But each door is hiding an unpleasant surprise. Here's a creepy monster sitting in a cage behind the first door. It's very hungry and angry. There's a bunch of venomous snakes crawling behind the second door and the lights are off, so Matt won't be able to see them. And behind the door, there's a huge fire. Which way is uh -oh. more or less safe? He should choose the first door. The monster is in a cage, so Matt can just pass by and escape. Matt manages to escape and enters the nearest gas station. Uh -oh. He spots three odd things about this place right away. Can you see them too? The poster with the engine oil advertisement offers a 0% discount. The cashier has an octopus tentacle instead of hands. See this package of chips? It says they have the flavor of spiders. That's weird. The cashier agrees to help Matt get home if he manages to solve his riddle. I came first on earth, but second in heaven. I also come twice a week, but I'm found just once a year. I stay away for months, but you can find me in February. What am I? The correct answer is the letter E. Matt returns home uh -oh. and finds out that someone has left homemade cookies on the kitchen table. He examines all the doors and windows. He finds no signs of a break-in. Matt decides to question three suspects who have a key. His mother says, I spent all day with my yoga teacher and my class ended 10 minutes ago, so I didn't have time for cookies. The plumber says, I fixed the kitchen sink in the morning and left for home. Why would I bring you any gifts? And Matt's girlfriend, Erica, says, I visited your house a couple of hours ago to drop off some shopping bags and left for the gym. I didn't see any cookies. Who's lying? The plumber. Take a closer look at the kitchen sink. It has no tap. Therefore, he lied. Matt is walking in the local restaurant and gets lost in a maze. He has only 15 seconds to get out before it starts raining. Can you help him find the right direction? Ready to see the answer? Here's the correct route. Hey, hey, here's another opportunity to train your brain and sharpen your logical thinking skills. Don't miss out on it. Yeah. Liam was a doctor from Chicago. Once, he asked his boss to let him attend a medical conference in Berlin. The boss let Liam go but asked him to send a photo report as soon as he got to Europe. The next day, the boss received a message from Liam that said, Hello from Germany. That's me right now. A photo was attached to the message. After looking at it, the boss realized Liam had lied to him. How did he figure it out? In the photo, there's a clock on the wall that shows exactly the same time as the clock in the boss's office. 
If Liam was in Germany, the clock would show a different time because of the time difference. A bit of math for you. Can you figure out what comes next in this sequence of numbers? It's gonna be this long number. You see, each next number is a verbal representation of the number before it. This way, if we start with 1, the next number in the sequence will be 1-1. One, one. And the next one is two ones. And then we've got 1-2-1-1. One, 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 and so on. Look at this picture attentively. The guy has sent a message to his girlfriend. He seems to be missing her very much, but is it true? Can you figure out if he might be cheating on her? Yes, unfortunately he is. Look at this napkin. There's a lipstick print on it. He must be with another girl. Once a man came to a police station. He said he'd been robbed on his way to the bank. He was carrying a briefcase with a big sum of money when a man wearing a black mask and gloves attacked him. The robber snatched the briefcase and ran away. The police officer listened to the man and asked him about a fresh cut on his right cheek. The man replied that it was from a ring the criminal had been wearing. After these words, the policeman immediately knew the man was lying. How did he realize it? Are you as attentive as the police officer to figure it out? The man couldn't know about the ring on the robber's finger, since he claimed that the criminal had been wearing gloves. Turn me on my side, and I'm everything. Cut me in half, and I'm nothing. What am I? I'm the number 8. On my side, I look like an infinity symbol. And cut in half, I'm just two zeros. Look at these people very attentively. Your task is to find out which girl the man is interested in. Remember that the answer here lies in the details. And this puzzle can tell us how good you are at reading people. Our body language can tell other people a lot about us. The way you sit, stand, and even move your arms can give away what you're thinking about or how you feel. The girls in the picture have different postures and facial expressions. And once we look closely, we will understand that the man is clearly interested in the girl who is most interested in him. But which one is it? The second one from the left. Her feet are pointed towards the man, and we can say the same about his feet. While girls number one and three are looking at the man too, they aren't into him all that much. Their feet and body language give it away. A wealthy old man didn't have a will, so he ordered his sons to race their horses, and the one whose horse would be slower would receive his inheritance. The two sons realized that they would be unable to race since they would be both holding their horses back. So they went to a wise man and asked him what they should do. After listening to his advice, the brothers started racing at full speed. What did the wise man tell them? He recommended switching horses. Now, whoever wins the race will get the inheritance because they will technically own the losing, slower horse. Four people came to a river with a narrow bridge that could only hold two people at a time. It was nighttime, and they had just one torch that had to be used when crossing the bridge. Person A needed one minute to cross the bridge, and person B could do it in two minutes. It took person C five minutes to get to the other side, and person D needed eight minutes. If two people were crossing the bridge together, they had to move at the slower person's pace. 
Can all these people get across the bridge within 15 minutes or less? Yes, they can. Let's see how it can be done. First, person A and person B cross the bridge, and then person A brings the light back. It takes three minutes. Next, person C and person D cross the bridge, and person B brings the light back afterward. It takes another 10 minutes. And finally, person A and person B cross the bridge again. This takes another two minutes. In total, we've got 15 minutes. Recently, Mark had been feeling some discomfort in his knees, so he decided to go to the doctor. After examining the man, the specialist gave him a piece of paper, saying, Here's the solution. And then he left the room. What was written in the note? What did the doctor mean? The treatment is a painless operation. The missing letters spell out pain. Thus, Mark should have a painless operation. Thomas was talking with his colleague, and she asked him how many kids he had. He answered that he had three children, and she asked him about their ages. Thomas replied, The product of their ages is 72, and the sum of their ages is the same as my house number. His colleague was confused. The next time she was invited to Thomas's house, she paid attention to his house number, and still, she couldn't figure out the kids' ages. Tom decided to help her. Oh, that's right, I forgot to tell you the oldest one likes chocolate pudding. And after that, his colleague figured out the ages of the three children. Have you understood how old they are? The kids are three, three and eight. The key to this riddle is the colleague knows the sum of the children's ages, but she still can't tell how old Thomas's children are because she is stuck between several possibilities. To narrow it down further, only two sets of numbers that multiply to 72 share the same sum. And that's when the man reveals that his oldest child likes chocolate pudding. Only the latter of these two sets has a distinct oldest child. Imagine that you're in a dark room. There's a candle, a wood stove, and a gas lamp there. You only have one match. Uh -oh. What do you light first? First of all, you'll need to light the match. These five bags of gold all look identical. Each of them has 10 gold pieces in it, but one of the bags contains fake gold. The real gold and fake gold are identical in every way, except the weight. Each piece of fake gold weighs 1.1 ounce, while a piece of real gold weighs 1 ounce. You have a perfectly accurate digital scale, but you can use it only once. How can you determine which bag has the fake gold? You should take one gold piece from the first bag, two from the second bag, three from the third bag, four from the fourth bag, and five from the fifth bag. If the number on the scale ends in point one, you'll know the first bag contains the fake gold. If the number ends in point two, then the fake gold is in the second bag, and so on. 